Welcome back to World Studies. We are picking up on the last Roman numeral for this chapter. Uh, according to your assignment list, your schedule that you are expected to do for this class, uh, just so you guys know, tomorrow is scheduled for the um, test review. The chapter 17 test will be given to you next week. Next week. That'll be the first thing you'll want to do next week when you pick up your, your week four packets. Uh, no test in the, this packet. Hope you all enjoyed this slightly lighter week when it comes to assignments. But we're picking up with Roman numeral five, the Great Depression. After all, it's pretty depressing that we are finishing the chapter notes today, isn't it? No, I think pretty much everyone's happy we're finishing the notes. So, the some nations suffered economically after World War I. Some nations, like the U.S., prospered initially. However, growing debt, loss of trade, and a stock market crash will help bring about the greatest economic disaster of the 20th century. Letter A, causes of the Depression. It, it's been said that if you, don't, if you don't learn from history, you'll be doomed to repeat it. That's somewhat true. Uh, the mistakes of the past, if we don't learn from those mistakes, there is a possibility that we might repeat those mistakes in the present. Well, the Great Depression happened in the past. We don't want that to happen again, so we ought to learn why the Great Depression happened. Some of the reasons why, there are many reasons, some of the reasons why the Great Depression happened uh, could be associated with events that happened during that time period, unique to that time period. Okay, that doesn't affect us. But then there are some other things that occurred that could affect us even today in the 21st century. So let's learn about some of these causes. Number one, financial devastation of World War I. All but one of the Allied nations failed to pay their war debts to the U.S., placing immense stress on the economy. Um, the U.S. had loaned about $10 billion to the Allies during the war. Within three years, the national debt had risen from about $1 billion to $24 billion. And then when Europe faced financial problems, they simply refused to pay their war debts. Um, you know, money that's borrowed, money that's debt, it doesn't just disappear when people refuse to pay it. it someone has to suffer for it. And the U.S. is eventually going to face a terrible consequence for what Europe did after World War I. By the way, the one exception, the one country that managed to pay its war debts to the U.S. after the war, Finland. So, in case there are any Finnish people out there, congratulations. This is your moment to glory in your country's awesomeness. Thank you, Finland, for paying your debts. Number two. <laughs> Number two, the failure of the Federal Reserve. Okay, do we have the Federal Reserve in the U.S. today? Yeah. If, if you ever pull out a dollar bill and you look at the top of the dollar bill, you'll notice it says Federal Reserve note. So we have a Federal Reserve today. What does the Federal Reserve do? It controls the money supply and it protects the banking system. In short, the Federal Reserve decides how much money will be printed and put into circulation and what the interest rates will be to borrow from the banks. Well, the problem was the Federal Reserve raised the interest rates, making it harder to borrow money to build up businesses. This hindered economic growth and contributed to the stock market crash in October 1929. Another thing that they did, and this isn't in your notes, but another thing they did that caused trouble was that they printed too much paper money and it caused kind of a little inflation bubble during the 1920s. And then when the Federal Reserve realized what they had done, they tried to tail it back some. Well, it's going to result in that bubble bursting. Number three. A third 
cause for the Great Depression was the economic system known as protectionism. When the U.S. economy began to weaken, Americans asked the government to pass a tariff to protect American businesses from foreign competition. That tariff was known as the Smoot-Hawley Tariff Act, and it proved to be the highest tariff in U.S. history, and it will greatly diminish international trade. I think I've mentioned this before. Tariffs are a double-edged sword. The purpose of a tariff is to protect, hence the word protectionism, protect the domestic businesses, the homegrown businesses from foreign businesses. Okay, that sounds like a good thing. But what's the bad thing? Well, the bad thing is now you can't trade any of your goods with other countries because who's going to trade with us when we have huge amounts of taxes to anything being shipped to other countries? The answer is no one. And so we will lose the opportunity to trade with other nations. Other nations also responded by passing tariffs against the U.S., U.S. exports dropped from about $7 billion in 1929 to about $2.5 billion in 1932. The loss of trade devastated the American economy, and the damage spread throughout many nations as one government after another imposed tariffs on imposed imported goods. So sometimes tariffs seem to help. But at other times, tariffs can truly be a problem. It really, honestly, involves figuring out when it's good and when it's bad. A question that is thankfully answered by people much smarter than myself. On page 325, there is a purple box that I want you to read to yourself. It's called The Danger of Tariffs. Please read that to yourself. Once you have finished, unpause the video and resume with the lesson. All right, moving on. Lastly, the costs of the Depression. Although the governments of the world tried to solve the Great Depression, it continued for many years with little improvement. One of the issues had to do with unemployment. About one-third of the workforce lost their jobs, and many began looking to the government to meet their needs. Rather than turning to God, as perhaps Americans had done in the past during the Great Revivals, many people looked to the government to meet their needs. Uh, it's also something that I've considered during our current uh issue coronavirus where has it that the american people turning to god for aid for assistance for prayer for a solution after all isn't god the great physician the great healer the miracle worker and yet by and large society as a whole instead of turning to god for help has turned to the government for help now yes the government's job is to make sure it, uh, for our public safety, but at the same time, why haven't we considered turning to God for help? I feel like the reason is most people don't believe God can help or will help. Well, back to the Great Depression. The Great Depression began while Herbert Hoover was president, and most people blamed him for it. Hoover spent large amounts of taxpayer dollars trying to assist various areas of the American economy. Yet, unemployment remained high and recovery proved elusive. One-third, imagine one-third of all Americans losing their jobs today. Imagine if, um, you know, if we t were to look at our class, a class of about 28 students, and imagine if one-third of your families suddenly were unemployed. We lose about nine, ten of you in the class because of it. That would be traumatic. Number two, the growth of government. Under Franklin D. Roosevelt, the government grew extensively as billions of dollars were spent to try to support the jobless and end the depression. Thousands of temporary make work jobs were created by several federal agencies. If you want more details on the New Deal programs that FDR promoted as president, please refer to the 8th grade 
American Republic playlist, or just wait till you're in eighth grade yourself. Yet the unemployment rate never dropped below 14%, and the depression continued to drag on. I don't know about you, but that is a very depressing point to end on. But guess what? That, my students, is the end of the notes for, well, your homework, page 145 in your activities book. Page 145 in your activities book. It's a chapter review. Uh, you underline some of the answers. You do a short matching section as well. Uh, this will be your homework. It'll be due with your week three packet. Remember, your chapter 17 test will come out with your uh, fourth week packet. And remember, of course, uh, packets are going out on the first day of the week. Hope you all have a good rest of the day. Be good, do good. Bye.